Chupacabra off-road back in the desert. This time, we're doing some suspension tuning. Chupacabra off-road back in the desert. Part five, race razor, and this is the part I've been waiting for. We get to tune the suspension. I'm a suspension geek. I love that most, probably with any feature on these vehicles. You probably won't see many vlogs of me talking about car audio, but suspension, I'm a nerd. We're out here in Geyser Loop in my backyard, but to go back in the story, as you guys know, if you've been following the car build, taking this car on a couple trips, so I've kind of already cheated a little, got a little bit of feedback and experience in the car before we've come out here and really started playing with some of the tuning characteristics of the suspension. So to back it up, we got the car running, rode it a couple times out here, but my first big ride was the Arizona Peace Trail. The car felt stiff as you could imagine, partially because I had my air pressure at 22 PSI in the tires. Um, it was a slower paced ride, rocky and technical. Not what this car was designed for, but my first thought when building this car is I'd use it for everything. Most importantly, we're gonna set the car up for how it works out here in Geyser Loop in a race situation. Took it on the trip, car worked well. Like I said, it was stiff. We got the ride height set up about 18 inches in the front, 17 and a half in the rear. Pretty high, higher than your normal side-by-side -side vehicle that comes with 32 inch tires, like a stock Turbo S is about 16 inches in the front, a uh, little bit lower in the rear. So I wanna talk about the ride height setup because for me, as I'm learning this new vehicle, it's quite a bit different than a four-seater. That's probably the most important characteristic I've been trying to feel and trying to adjust for, for these first few rides. So in terms of the chassis, the seats are moved back quite a bit compared to a four-seat Razor. The frame rails are based off of a four-seat Razor chassis, which is a 117-inch wheelbase. This is a 119-inch wheelbase only because you get the extra two inches from the Lone Star Long Travel Kit. So as you can see with my Walker Evans wheels, I'm about 74 inches wide, 119 wheelbase. With the car set up with the chassis, the seats are moved back a good eight to 10 inches from where a stock location in a four seat Razor is. So you add that with the bigger 25 gallon fuel cell right behind me. There's no radiator intercooler in the front. We got a big combo radiator intercooler in the rear. There's very little weight on the front of the car. So during the Arizona Peace Trail and then right after I took it to the Parker race course, you can definitely tell there's a lot less weight in the front end of the vehicle, which definitely is a lot different than what I've experienced. Um, the first time I had a Razor, the front end bottom quite a bit back in 2014. Also, we did a tuning video of my 2018 Razor 4 Turbo. We'll link in the description so you can check that out. But I learned a lot over the years with the vehicles I've owned. I've spent a lot of time in 4C Razors a lot of time in two seat razors and a little bit of time in a two seat x3 and a little bit in a four seat x3 but this definitely has a unique feel because of how the weight shifted in the vehicle ride height is higher than all these stock vehicles the main reason being i've heard a lot of the race car teams run a little bit higher than normal because they're in really rough terrain if it's a really rutted course something like the mid 400 most of your best in the desert races particularly if you're going after the bigger tire open class vehicles they want more ground clearance, and um, that's kind of my initial thought. So, started off with 18 in the front. Right now, we're about 17 and a half in the front, 17 in the rear. That's felt pretty good. From there, recently we just did a trip to Sand Hollow. Sand Hollow had all different types of terrain. It was a really good environment to see how this car feels. We had some sand dunes, some big whoops that were sand whoops, as well as hard pack whoops some fast, slippery wash stuff, uh, kind of a little Ocotillo Wells kind of vibe. Um, an amazing amount of different terrain within a couple hours of riding. So the car felt pretty good. Keep in mind these first few rides is all more of a typical leisurely pace type ride. But now that we're back in Geyser, we're gonna push the car harder. And I'm assuming it's gonna be a little bit on the soft side probably, and probably gonna have to slow down for some of the big G outs out here and um, hopefully the car feels really supple over the, the bumps and the harsh baby head rocks out here. But um, we're gonna go jump in the car, we're gonna go take it for a loop, and come back with our first initial impression.
just completed one full loop here out at the geyser loop and my suspicions were correct. Um, the car was really soft. Um, with this particular car, like I was mentioning, because the weight shifted back, you definitely have a lot more strain or a, the, the rear shocks are doing a lot more work. So I've had challenges of just kind of raising the rear end. I've had a couple of vehicles with these internal bypass shocks, the Razor Turbo, and when the car is running low, it definitely rides a lot harsher. It's in the stiffer compression zone. And you couple that with all the weight being shifted back in the vehicle, how much faster we're going. I really had to make sure we're at at least 17 in the rear. Loaded down with two guys, you know, full of fuel. All that adds to a lot of weight in the back of the car. So as I anticipated, we're hitting some of these G-outs, we're bottoming. I'm really having to let off the gas and not being able to drive pretty hard because it's too soft. So I think what we're gonna do with the ride height is get the back of the car up a little bit. I'm gonna go one complete revolution, which should bump the back of the car up about a half of an inch. Um, and for the reason of leveling out the car a little more, I think compared to a stock razor, we might not need to have that half inch in the front. I think more level is better because of the weight bias. Um, this last loop, we had our compression clickers all the way open in the fully soft setting. I really like to see how the car feels. I love that suppleness, but I'm going to go up a few more clicks in the rear. And then another thing I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and lower the crossover rings because I want to get on that stiffer spring sooner. So to talk about the shocks for just a little bit, these are their stock internal bypass, 3.0 rear, 2.5 front, they come on your stock Razor Turbo. And with the Lone Star Long Travel Kit, we needed to have them re-sprung and revalved. I sent these shocks to Shock Therapy. They did their full respring with a revalve kit. And basically I told them I've got a race car. I, was, I had these shocks tuned before the car was even built. So right out of the box, I'm pretty happy. Like I mentioned, this loop was soft, but I haven't even played with the crossover rings yet or the compression clickers. So as a whole, I've been happy with what they were able to do. We've got comfortable, compliant ride. The small bump sensitivity over some shocks that are not revalved is, is night and day. It's uh, really good. So I'm not sponsored by them. Didn't get a discount on any of their stuff. Just saying I think because these guys have a lot of data, they've sprung and valved a lot of race cars, a lot of Lone Star uh, suspended cars. Um, that's why I chose them. They're 20 minutes away and they ride in these environments like me. So pretty happy with it out of the box. We're going to go ahead and raise the back of the car a little, bump up the compression clickers, and then we're going to drop the rear crossover rings. Right now, the bottom of the crossover ring is about 10 inches. I want to drop it at least an inch and see how it feels. We're going to go do a loop and come back and see how it goes from there. All right, so the first thing we're gonna try are lowering the crossover rings about an inch. Got them loosened up and with shock therapy, they've got this little O-ring which makes it pretty easy to figure out where you wanna be. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread these down. We're gonna go take it for a quick spin. The back end was going through most all the travel pretty easy out here. We didn't bottom harsh because I kind of let off the gas, but I think this is the first adjustment that's gonna be the most impactful because I can raise the rear, but still it's gonna be soft and we need to get on that stiffer spring sooner. So let's try this first and then we're gonna come back and I'll probably bump the low speed compression about four clicks and then we'll see how that feels too. And then from there, we'll kind of come back and see if we need to raise the back of the car. So did a loop with the crossover rings down, felt good. One variable that totally changed the feel of the car was not having another co-rider in it. Definitely need to tune this car with another rider in. So 
Still felt a little soft. I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up, but gonna have my co-rider jump back in and go with me. And what I'm doing here is I'm gonna go from fully soft up four clicks. I'm just gonna do the rear for right now because I'm still not feeling the front bottoming. Like I said, all the action's happening in the rear with all the weight of the car. That's how we're bottoming. I was bottoming less that time. Definitely an improvement. I could see probably wanting to go down a little bit more on the crossover rings, but I have my co-rider jump back in and we're gonna go ahead and do another quick little loop and see how this goes. So definite improvement by bumping up the compression clickers. That was just a little bit of an improvement. Much more drastic dropping the crossover rings. If you also check our YouTube channel, we just did a review on some of a, a spring kit. And one reason why I'm such a big fan of spring kits is because even if you have a base level shock like what I have on this car, giving you that adjustment is such a big deal so you can control bottoming out and control how the car feels. So that was good. Um, I'm gonna now raise the back of the car up. We're gonna go one full revolution on the rear. It's gonna bring it up, like I said, a little bit, maybe around half of an inch. I think this is gonna work well because right now we only have a half a tank of fuel. You know, I think it's gonna need to go up a little bit. But one thing I'm kind of curious, I'm gonna be mindful of is as we raise the car, it tends to sway a little. So we're gonna take some footage outside and see if we can capture what I'm feeling. You can't really capture that with the GoPro footage. But as we go higher, of course, the car is gonna sway a little bit more. We're gonna do a future video where we're playing with the sway bar, but because I don't have high and low speed compression and rebound control with the shock adjustments, I've got pretty much a plain Jane setup. Um, I'm trying to get it as plush as I can, resist bottoming, but also think about sway. So I really don't like uh, turning up the compression. I want it to be as plush as possible, but that also helps mitigate a little of that side to side. We're not using a front sway bar on this vehicle. We've just got the Lone Star Heavy Duty rear sway bar. And right now we've got it in the stiffest setting. So it will, so basically there's always gonna be this balancing rope, right? I'm probably the type of guy who's gonna to wanna to have the car move around a little for the sake of it being plush. Um, and we're gonna learn as we race, you know, we might wanna go with something stiffer that can hit stuff harder, but uh, is a little bit less plush. You, know, you always want to have your cake and eat it too. You want it to be really plush and supple so the wheels are hooking up, you're getting traction and not bottom. But inevitably, I'm feeling like we might make a compromise of a little bit of the plushness to get this thing to prevent bottoming when we're talking full race pace and not have to let off when we're hitting big G outs so we can keep the momentum going and move forward on the race course and not get passed all day. So let's bump the car up really quick. So I got the car up in the air. I'm gonna go ahead and knock the top preload ring off. Spray these down with some WD-40. It makes life a lot easier. You can't see it, but what I always do is I make a little mark uh, I use like a little sharpie, I always keep in my toolbox. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin this clockwise, one full revolution until I see this mark again, and then we're gonna take it back up.
we raise the rear of the car up, it feels even better. Um, I think it's gonna work really well as we've got a full tank of fuel. Um, didn't feel squirrely in the back like I was anticipating. It just feels good. I think we made some improvements. Today I definitely learned I had it set up softer for more of a leisurely riding pace, which has worked well and didn't hardly bottom, but when you're out here pushing it in a real rocky setting, the game changes quite a bit. So even though most people don't own a race car, I hope this added value. I um, hope that encourages you to kind of think about what your car feels like and how you can make some improvements. A couple quick tips, I think, if you're new to this, if you haven't really played with your suspension, there's a lot of adjustments you guys can make at home for free that are gonna increase the performance before you start spending money. So, first off, my suggestion, when you're going on a ride, play with your clickers. Almost every side-by-side -side has some level of a compression adjustment. In between your ride, bump it up a few clicks, bump it down, and try to get that feeling. I think that's most important is to kind of think about how your side-by-side -side feels and what you might want to do to improve it and make it feel better. Tip number two is check your ride height. I see a lot of people out there. They add a lot of accessories. Most people saw their stock springs. The vehicle's lower than it should be. And particularly when you've got some internal bypass shocks, you're really losing a lot of small bump performance when the car, the vehicle's riding too low. So check with the recommended manufacturer settings. Fox release settings for all of you Can-Am X3 owners. They're too low from the factory. The Razor's pretty well published. Make sure you kind of calibrate that for what your tire size is. Again, we're gonna link below in the description for my shock tuning video of my 2018 Razor Turbo 4 that we did some tuning with, with some 32 inch tires, which is obviously a popular setup here in the Southwest. And um, hopefully this helps you guys make some positive changes, get more out of your ride for free. One other tip, if you can find a riding spot like this where you can test the same setting all the time, it's gonna really help you develop that feel. So you're gonna have a better idea of what your side-by-side -side is doing. So when you start making these adjustments, you'll really feel them. And I suggest a really rough environment like this. Thanks guys, we'll see you next time.